Hello everyone, this is Mr. Meter and we are going to talk about optical communication and optical probes and the role they play in the metering industry. First of all, from now on the format of our videos will change and actually I myself will be in the videos. Also, I will gather all your questions and make a Q&A video answering all your questions. So do not hesitate and feel free to send me all your questions to mrmeter87 at gmail.com this video is sponsored by German Metering GmbH, which is a manufacturer of optical probes and has been in the market for over 12 years and also has been active for years in the metering industry in local and remote meter data collection solutions. They have a variety of wired and Bluetooth probes in which you can browse from their website german-metering.de as shown on the screen and you can order your needed products by sending an email directly to info at sign german-metering.de also you can find the link in this uh, in the description of this video okay let's talk about the optical communication in the metering industry nearly all digital electricity meters have optical interface and a portion of water and gas meters also have it an optical interface is a two-way communication interface that utilizes the infrared light as current the infrared optical port or ir port or a flag port is basically the simplest wireless communication method most of the remote controls we use every day to interact with our TV sets uh, are IR or infrared communication ports that can um, transmit few bits of data in a range. In infrared communication, especially in the metering industry, the interfer interference of light has been a big problem. Because, of, because the emitting sensors are not the only emitters, Nearly most of the light sources around us generate infrared light, like light bulbs, the sun, and etc. So blocking the excess light becomes very, very important. In the optical communications, the sender must tr transmit the data with the receiver. Basically, both lights are on, lights turned on. Uh, in the basic method, the light interference becomes a really big problem. For solving this problem different transmission protocols are normally used um, the first method used was to pulse the LED on and off quickly instead of leaving it on for transmission time this uh, on and off act normally is done at frequency of 38,000 Hertz which is called normally the carrier frequency for the infrared communication signal having this have this in mind that uh, other frequencies also can be used like uh, 36 kilohertz. Okay, there are various protocols used in the infrared communications, but we will cover only two famous ones, which are the NECIR transmission protocol and the RC5 or the Philips protocol. Bear in mind that the communication protocols in infrared communications are only uh, the way that enables the both parties better understand each other thus reducing the interference by large amount and um, the main technique of is of flashing light flashing led lights remains the same uh, i will be explaining these two protocols uh, based on the article available on the link you see on the screen from dg key website by a, a maker.io staff. Okay, the NECIR protocol uses a technique called pulse distance distant coding to differentiate the two logic states. Uh, what you see on the in the picture on uh, on the right uh, is the basic demonstration of NECIR protocol. Pulses of uh, different lengths actually define the basic two logical states. Uh, one will be low and one will be high. The logical one is a 562.2 microseconds burst followed by a 1.687 milliseconds low period. 
and the logical zero is a 562.2 microsecond burst follow, followed by a, the same microseconds as the low period. Uh, the full message frame in this protocol starts with a 9 millisecond leading pulse burst uh, followed by a 4.5 milliseconds uh, low period. Data will be transmitted next, uh, which consists of the following, and, and that is an 8-bit address of the device, and which is the log uh, which contains, um, which includes actually the logical uh, inverse of the first 8 bits, the 8 bits command, and the logical inverse of the command bits. And finally, uh, a final 562.5 milliseconds burst to signify the end of the message. This protocol uses the frequency of 38 kilohertz as default. Okay, the RC5 or Philips protocol uses the f a phase coding method uh, or uh, what they call the Manche Manchester coding methodology for transmitting data in distinguishing the logical bits. Uh, the difference between this uh, protocol and the NECIR protocol is that the low and the high states both have the same time length. Based on the Manchester coding principles, the pulses must have the following order of low then high or high then low for equal times. Okay, other difference is that uh, it uses the 36 kilohertz carrier frequency. Logical one uh, is an 889 microseconds low period followed by an, the same uh, microseconds burst. And the logical zero is an 889 microsecond burst followed by a, the same low period again. Low period, yeah. So the full message frame in this protocol starts with two, uh, sorry, two start bits, uh, which both must be high. Uh, next is a toggle bit, uh, which can be used to detect repeated signals. Um, after that, five address bits and the six command bits. And generally, every message takes around uh, 24,892 milliseconds to get transmitted. Uh, sorry. Uh, this was the basics of optical communications in the base level. But uh, different optical communication modules handle these signals internally, and engineers won't have to deal with these protocols in this level. So this was just a brief explanation of what happens underneath of these modules. Okay, the optical ports on electricity and water meters or gas correctors, which are often equipped with two LEDs, uh, serve a specific purpose in the data communication. These ports are a part of the optical communication system that allows for the secure, secure and efficient transfer of data between the meter and the external devices, such as handheld units used by service engineers during uh, installation or maintenance. Okay, one LED uh, typically acts as a light emitter, uh, sending signals to the external device, while the other one acts as a receiver. Uh, collecting signals from the external device. This bidirectional communication is essential for tasks like reading meter data, configuring the meter, or updating its firmware. The use of these two LEDs uh, facilitates a form of series of communication based uh, on, based on uh, IEC uh, 62056. Um, sorry. Five six standards, uh, which are international standard versions of the DLMS COSM specification. Uh, this standard ensures interoperability and uniformity 
among uh, various energy meter manufacturers, allowing for a wide range of data to be transmitted securely and reliably. In summary, uh, the two LEDs in the optical ports of electricity meters are, or other types of meters are crucial for the bi-directional communications required for data transfer communication and configuration and maintenance of the metering devices. Okay. Um, optical probes, on the other hand, are, uh, port are portable optical ports, which uh, by being aligned uh, to LEDs uh, on the optical ports of meters can interact and transfer data. The optical probes or optical heads uh, must be used uh, by a handheld device or a laptop because they normally are only transparent devices translating optical to digital signals. Uh, there are normally two communication methods between handheld units and the optical probes, wired and wireless con connections. Most of the probes are wired and uh, have various output connectors like a USB A or USB Type C and etc. Uh, but some of them have a Bluetooth connection capability. So we either have wired or Bluetooth probes. Uh, these this the reason uh, that Bluetooth is used is that most of the laptops and uh, handheld units have this module. Uh, and it is accepted it is an accepted method for using wireless devices. Uh, the mechanism is that uh, an application on the HHU or handheld unit we call or laptop will communicate uh, in the application level through a COM port uh, with the optical probe, uh, which is responsible for translating digital signals to infrared signals. Uh, the probe will be communicating with the optical port, uh, sending and receiving commands from application to the meter and vice versa. Okay. Um, optical ports on the meters, depending on the manufacturer and also the country of the or utility policy in which the meter is ordered, ordered or installed or support various different protocols. They normally support IEC protocols for uh, European countries. Uh, for US, they use this or and support ANSI, ANSI. Uh, other than that, uh, they can support DLMS or any other protocol. Or for example, command line for uh, EDMI meters and etc. Okay, this was a brief explanation on optical communication in the metering industry. Once again, you can visit German Metering's website and browse through their products and order optical probes based on your needs. Please hit the subscribe button and we will be talking much more on network protocols, transmitting data models and modes and all about applications of data measurement and transmission in energy grids and the metering industry. Thank you very much.